let's be honest, the audio market usually doesn't see anything new, but here with me are the Bose Ultra Open Earbuds. And very evidently, this is one company that still manages to innovate, especially on an audio front. Thank you to Bose India for making this review possible by sending me this demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump straight into how these are built. The unboxing experience you get with these earphones is surprisingly simple. Upon opening the box, you'll be greeted by the case with the earbuds in them. You get a USB-A to USB-C cable for charging the case and you get the literature as well. This set of Ultra earbuds is the white smoke color, but you can also get this in black. The case has a neat matte finish to it, which is always nice to see instead of glossy cases, so this shouldn't show any scratches and scuffs anytime soon. It does have a thin recessed glossy band running around, which does catch light in certain angles. And of course, you do see the Bose logo on the front of the case right above the notification LED light. The bottom of the case has the USB-C connector for charging up and the rear of the case has a sync and reset button which is always convenient to have in case it's needed. When you open the case, you'll notice two LED lights which let you know whether the earbuds are charged or are still charging. Closing the case doesn't give you a typical plastic snapping sound, there's a slight sense of it being muted which does make it sound more welcoming. This is most likely happening due to Bose using a rubber-like material in the upper inner section of the lid which does mellow out its snap. The earbuds have a very different look and feel to them thanks to being something completely new. I'm sure you've seen open ear style earphones before as I have but I haven't seen anything quite like this. The outer shell of these has a metallic look to it with a barrel on one side and the other hooked side has openings for sound to be directed toward your ear canal. Joining these two parts is a soft silicon material that flexes quite easily so so it can loop around your helix. Coming back to that little barrel at the back, it has a button with a metallic finish to match the outer shell and what's great about this is that it's not a touch surface like most manufacturers are leaning towards. It's a tactile button which won't register any false inputs and won't leave you looking for it as well. On a comfort front, if I'm being honest, these did seem quite peculiar in the start when I first wore them, quite simply because I've never experienced anything like this before. But after about half an hour or so, you stop realizing it's even on your ears because of how light and well balanced these are. Thanks to the flexible silicon, it'll fit all ear sizes and is even adjustable when it comes to where on your helix you'd want to place these. What I do like about this is that it gives the section behind your upper helix a break from being overloaded. If you wear glasses, a mask and open your looped earphones over your ear, that's a lot of load there. This does help reduce that load on the ear. Considering these are open style earphones, you're most probably going to want to use these in a gym, outdoors or on a sports field. So if it happens to rain or get damp, these should be more more than good enough to take them out wherever you want thanks to their IPX4 rating. On a feature front, this comes with Bluetooth version 5.3. It will get multi-point connectivity later on in the year via a software update. It does come with tactile buttons, which I do prefer over touch controls. And if you do want to control the finer aspects of these earphones, you can do that via the Bose Music app. The app will show you the earbuds battery levels and you can control your music from here as well. You can control the volume levels, you get audio preference modes, you can customize and add more here for different scenes you may be in. You can choose to connect to alternate software from the app and multi-device support will be added via a software update later this year for these earbuds. You get an EQ and an immersive audio option to play around with which I'll speak about in the chapter about sound. Then you can go into shortcuts to customize what you want your left or right gestures to do. By pressing and holding the tactile button on the barrel, you can choose to toggle between your earbuds cycling through its listening modes, change immersive audio settings, switch devices or access your voice assistant. These can be done on either left or right earbuds. Then you can go into the tip section which will help you understand the finer controls like for the media controls. A single tap on either button will play and pause your music or answer and end phone calls. A double tap will skip to the next track, a triple tap will skip to the beginning or previous track depending on where you are in the current track, a double tap and hold will increase your volume from the right earbud and reduce your volume on the left one, a press and hold will put you into immersion or stereo mode. Then you can go into the settings section if you want to check and see if there are any software updates for your device and you will also see a slew of options here for things you can do to customize your earbuds, including a calibration option for immersive audio, which is a good idea to do when you first set these up. And there is also an auto volume option which will dynamically change depending on the environment you're in. It'll try and match the ambience level so you can still hear your media and it's pretty quick to adjust when your ambience volume goes up or down. 
On a side note, these earphones can sync up to Bose's speakers that have Bose's simple sync technology. So if you're in a situation where you are watching something via your Bose speaker and people walk in and you just want to finish absorbing your content without disturbing them, you can just latch onto that speaker and it will uh, send over all the data or the audio that you want to listen to. Uh, you can even use this while you're doing chores around the house in, in this kind of setting. Now due to its open design, it very obviously doesn't have active noise cancelling, but it does have a few microphones to help it with its environmental noise noise cancelling for any phone calls you may want to make. So if you do want to know how your voice would sound carried over to your recipient in a busy setting, there's really only one way to show you how. So I'm calling you from the usual busy street. I do all of my call tests from just to give you a sense of all the amount of noise that these are going to be battling with their environmental noise cancelling. Now these earphones do have four microphones which means it has two microphones per earbud uh, to battle the noise around me and as you can see uh, there are a whole bunch of four wheelers, two wheelers and you might get the occasional pressure horn from a truck going past as well and there is some construction work going on over my left shoulder as well. So I have been on the camera microphone all this time and I'll switch over to the Bose Ultra Open Earbuds right about now. So this is the overall vocal tonality you can expect to carry over to your recipient whenever you're talking to them now. No, no, this is the worst kind of situation you can be in. Uh, near a busy street, if you're, if you're outdoors uh, and you, you have to take a call, no doubt this will do significantly better with isolating your voice in controlled environments uh, like an office or at your home. Now, the first thing I have realized in fact while talking in this kind of environment is I can hear myself quite naturally, obviously because my ears are open. Uh, other earphones do tend to create a seal so you don't get as much feedback uh, uh, except through vibrations uh, through your skull. So. Uh, being on a phone call in this kind of situation with this kind of setup does feel a lot more natural. So, uh, anyway, this has been the, the demo for you to see how your voice will carry over. And you, of course, are sitting in the reviewer seat to see whether or not you like how this total quality of your voice will carry over toward your recipient because this is how your recipient will hear you. And uh, I do hope that this has helped you understand these earphones a little bit better. And I will see you back at the studio. In typical Bose fashion, they've been extremely secretive about the size and type of driver they've decided to use for these. It's confidential. Their frequency response is confidential. But what I can tell you is that it does support the SPC and AAC codec. And the other thing that I do know is that it uses a tiny dipole transducer system. So in theory, this shouldn't be able to carry very much depth considering it'll be as small as it is especially. So uh, this is where it actually surprised me because when it comes to its overall depth, its base is not lacking and neither is its volume. On a volume front, these are very comfortable to listen to at between 25 and 35% volume, but uh, you can go higher up in volume. Now, I found these to be a little too loud for me at about 50% volume and uh, going beyond this, I don't think makes any sense because being open earbuds, you want to be able to listen to your environment around you when you're doing whatever activities you're doing. And when you go past 50% volume, not only do you not hear the things that are around you, uh, but it just gets a little too loud and honestly if you plan on listening to this at very loud volumes I wouldn't recommend doing that because uh, prolonged uh, high volume listening can damage your hearing in the long run. But uh, coming back to uh, lower volumes, if, if you do plan on listening to this at lower volumes, uh, I did expect this to thin out considerably at lower volumes but even down low at 20% it does manage to have a good amount of depth that I haven't heard on any other uh, open style earphones before. When it comes to its soundstage, I wasn't expecting anything special because I have heard other open style designs before. But this is a slightly wider presentation than other styles of open design I've heard before. In fact, what surprised me a little more was the fact that it does have a slight vertical stage as well. Now, uh, this is when it's on its basic stereo mode. You can go into the immersive audio mode and play around with it. Now when it's off, it stays on stereo. So your audio does sit uh, to the side of your ears. You can switch between still and motion. And what happens immediately after you switch over to any of these is the audio, the stage moves from more to your side to more in front. It does get a little more vertical and slightly wider. But the main difference is when it's on motion and you turn your head around, it's like the sphere around your head that follows you. Whereas when it's on still, it's almost like 
you are facing a stage and when you turn the stage stays where it is so if you're listening to a song where the vocalist is coming from here and you turn around it stays exactly there so it's it was kind of freaky to experience this because uh, when it's activated and things get a little more expansive it's it, it's an interesting experience to go through so now, when it comes to music listing in particular, I'm a bit more of a purist, so I, I don't like very uh, 3D-esque audio. Uh, I do prefer it in stereo because uh, in stereo things don't sound like they get slightly thin, like when it's in the immersive mode. But uh, I, I can see a lot of people enjoying this if they intend on watching some movies with this. It is definitely a very interesting experience. Imaging on this is surprisingly well detailed. Its overall detail recovery, I'd say, is pretty good because uh, in, in, with a driver that's firing at your ear from this distance, uh, it shouldn't be able to sound this crisp and clean. So if you're into listening to nuances in your music and you want to focus in on the, the finer uh, parts of your music, uh, be it vocals or instruments, it's very easy to do to this. And what's nice is uh, the details aren't over sharpened. So uh, it's not like the details are, you know, very sharp edged. So they're not cutting at your ear. The edges do have a slight curve to them. So it's very easy to absorb uh, the information uh, whenever you listen to any kind of music. So if you intend on listening to these for longer listening sessions, I don't expect these to cause any kind of listening fatigue for hours on end. High frequencies from most open earphones, whether bone conduction or air conduction, are normally a little aggressive or not very well detailed. These have a very different approach. This range has an effortlessness to it that it shouldn't have, especially considering how far the transducer is from your eardrum. Percussive instruments, horn or woodwind instruments in this range have an ease to them I'd usually expect from large driver headphones. There's certainly an elevation in this range so it can be as enthusiastic as it is here, but it doesn't get close to being aggressive so won't hurt the ear over longer listening sessions, so should keep you clear from listening fatigue. Listening to Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Schnitzer Orchestra perform, it never entered my mind. Mind. The highs here from the cymbals in the distance come through with a subtlety and gentle excitement these shouldn't be able to handle. But they're able to perform much like a seasoned athlete here. In a quiet room, late at night, these really can make you think you're not listening to something as small as these are. The mid frequencies are well tuned with a well balanced delivery from the mid mids to the lower mid range. Whereas the higher mids can seem a little elevated when you're listening to some recordings. The slight elevation in the higher mids can get a little too bright with some recordings, so can tend to be sibilant for anyone who's sensitive to this frequency range. But when you listen to a well-recorded and mixed track, it does get a sense of control and better balance through the entire mid-range. There is good separation between vocals and instruments, so if you do want to focus in on solos or even harmonies, these earbuds make it quite easy to do so. Listening to Foreigner perform I Want to Know What Love Is, there's a beautiful section in the chorus where the New Jersey Mass Choir comes in and I I didn't expect to hear them as prominently as I did. You can hear the weight of all their voices contributing towards the beauty of this track and if you want an added wider experience with this choir, switching on the immersive audio makes them even more prominent thanks to the widening of the stage. Low frequencies is usually where I don't get too excited about any open earbuds because it's, it's bound to get lost over here but Bose has somehow, somehow managed to maintain a significant amount of it here. No doubt, this range won't sound as full, big and enthusiastic as a pair of headphones or earphones, but it's able to give you upper, lower frequencies with a good amount of detail and energy. Mid bass and sub bass frequencies are bound to thin out, but can get a little more prominent the higher in volume you go, which in a sense would beat the purpose of having open earbuds if you can't hear your surroundings if you want more bass. But this range is more than adequate enough to to enjoy a little bit of electronic dance music, but I found myself enjoying how natural acoustic instruments sound in this range. Listening to an old favorite of mine, Cafe de Flore by Dr. Rocket, it's evident that the sub low frequencies aren't as blatant with these earphones, but I can enjoy using these for workouts or outdoor walks. It's more of a balanced approach towards its tuning than being heavy in the bass that will distract you from your outdoor or sport ventures. It'll keep you in the moment and let you enjoy your music at the same time. I decided to listen to something a little more natural or acoustic just to see how these perform there and while listening to Roop Kumar Rathod perform Mola Mere Mola, I have to say it was quite an enjoyable experience. This is where it's a lot more comfortable and really does shine in this range.
If you do want to play around with the audio, you can go into the app, into the EQ setting. Now, you do have a manual control EQ, which does have three bands, and you get a plus minus 10 dB gain. So, you can play around with it a little bit, but it does have four different presets, which are bass boost, which does as it says and boosts the bass by 8 dB. I can see a lot of people using this preset for workouts since it does get more energy in this range and doesn't distort. Then you get bass reducer, which cuts down the bass and mids. This makes it sound a little treble happy, but it does give a sense of slightly better clarity. Treble boost boosts the highs by 6 dB, making it sound a little bit richer in the highs. If you're not sensitive to this range, it can add a little bit of sparkle to your music and then you get treble reducer which drops the highs and mids slightly it does tend to sound a little on the flatter side but will make the higher range a lot easier for someone with higher frequency sensitivities So to sum up, on a build front, I think it's put together very well. I do like the overall finish of the case. It does feel quite premium uh, and what's the, the, the most different thing about this set is the earbuds themselves, not even the case because it's a very different design. I've never seen or handled anything like this uh, in the past at least. And uh, what I do like about it is the uh, the overall uh, finish of it. Uh, Bose has obviously used very good and high quality material. So uh, the little loop uh, that connects the barrel to the earbud in fact is very soft. So uh, it, it doesn't pinch the ear. It, it sort of sits very comfortably. It's like a very soft and gentle hug around the helix. So it doesn't really hurt the ear. Now, my wife has tried them on, uh, my dad's tried them on, I've tried them on, and well, my wife definitely has the smallest ears compared to uh, all of us that I did mention, and she found it as comfortable as I did. Uh, my dad didn't find them too comfortable because I think it was just too new for him. He found it a bit peculiar. I think he wore it for maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, but uh, it takes a little time to get used to. So. Uh, since I've been testing them, they've kind of grown on me. I've gotten used to it. And you sort of you sort of forget that you're wearing them after some time. It just becomes uh, second nature. So I'd say it's, it's nice also because it takes the load off your ears because uh, there are times when I'm wearing my glasses and a mask uh, when I go out to some places. And uh, honestly, having an extra loop of earphones, if you're wearing open style earphones that like I've tested in the past, some of them have loops. That's too much of a load on your ear. In fact, this ten tends to hurt, whereas this is out of the way. It's right on the side. So some people may not like this look. Some people may like it uh, quite a lot, but I like that it is different. On a feature front, it's got everything you need, really. It's got Bluetooth version 5.3 and its connectivity is pretty good. I haven't really had any issues with the connectivity. Now, I think a lot of people will miss multi-point connectivity, maybe only when they're sitting at their desks uh, or when they're at home, because when you're out on the go, you're going to most likely only have one device. But if you do want to switch over to uh, your secondary device, Bose does have that option within the app. So uh, it remembers the, the two devices you have connected it over to. And when you switch, uh, when you click on switching over, it, it tells you that I'm going to drop off from this and go on to the other device. So provided the Bluetooth is on, of course. So you do have that option, of course, until the software update does give it that multi-point connectivity a little later in the year. Then the two other features I do like with this set of earphones is the immersive audio and the auto volume control. Because the immersive audio is, well, I've heard immersive audio on, on other earphones. They you call it what you want, 3D audio, or spatial audio, or whatever else. But uh, all of them tend to thin out a little too much, whereas this doesn't lose too much depth when it opens up. But it is a very significant bubble that expands uh, from within your head to a little out of it. And that whole motion thing of being still when the stage is in front of you and you turn is real. I find that quite cool. So that is nice. I think it'll be pretty cool for movie watching, especially if you uh, are into that. But the dynamic volume control I found to be pretty good. In fact, it's very responsive. I tried it out while I was at my desk, in fact. So I increased the volume on my speakers just to see how quickly it can increase or decrease the volume. And it's pretty responsive depending on your ambience, of course. So uh, I'd say it's a very neat feature to have. And uh, it didn't seem to be on out of the box. So you might have to go to the settings to activate it. Now, no doubt this doesn't have active noise cancelling because it is an open design. But uh, the, the fact that it doesn't have active noise cancelling clearly states where it's pointed at. Uh, Bose has not made this for the individual who uh, wants absolute silence around them. This is targeted towards the individual uh, who is the athlete, who is the person who wants to go out for exercise or wants to be 
uh, in an area where he can hear or she can hear whatever is around them. Uh, you want to be aware of your surroundings, whether you want to uh, go hop onto your cycle and go for a ride or go mountain biking or trekking or whatever. Uh, it's good to be aware of your surroundings, especially when you're in this kind of situation. And uh, these earphones do make them possible. And at the same time, it does make it possible to listen to your music while being aware of your surroundings. And the fact that these even sound as good as they do at lower volumes when you can hear everything around you is is quite commendable. I, I, I really wouldn't have expected any kind of open earphones to sound like these do. And moving on to the sound, the, the, the fact that these are able to sound the way they do, I find it quite amazing. And you can't really judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. So usually when it's come to open earbuds in particular, I know that it doesn't make sense to say, oh, the bass isn't great. So this in particular, when it comes to the way it handles everything, when it comes to an open style, it shouldn't be possible. It shouldn't be able to give uh, imaging or detailed recovery as well as it does. It shouldn't have the, the clean and supple enough high frequencies with some terrific sounding music. It shouldn't be able to do that. And it, it shouldn't be able to have as much bass as it does because usually when you have a driver that's firing loudly to give you that bass, uh, people around you can hear it because it is just throwing a boosted signal at your, at your ear canal or your eardrum. With this, even at higher volumes, it's it's almost a whisper even in a very quiet environment yes you can hear it but it's it's almost as if they figured out how to really make it quite directional towards your ear canal and your drum now no doubt your the, the the depth factor will change slightly depending on where you place it on your on your helix where if it's slightly higher it will lose some depth if it's a little lower down it will gain a little more depth now placement will be important for this set of earphones so you'll have to figure out where you want uh, them to sit so that you hear your music the best way possible. Like I did mention, electronic dance music will not be as big and large sounding in the bass for obvious reasons. It is an open design, but uh, where it does sound really natural or, or good in the bass is when it's handling acoustic instruments. So I did uh, throw on Adele's when we were young. And honestly, if you were to put this on somebody's ears uh, blind test and let's say they can't tell that it's, it's a a loop around your ear, that specific song will sound like any other set of earphones. The fact that it can carry those uh, upper bass or upper lower frequency region as naturally as it can, it's it's kind of unbelievable because it should be tinny sounding. It should, shouldn't be able to carry that fullness or roundedness in the upper lower frequency range. So it's it's nothing short of being amazing and I, i'm quite blown by it again bose is being quite secretive about it this shouldn't be possible uh, for an open design this is what amazes me the fact that it can handle this range so naturally in fact uh, a lot of people will say that yeah they've used a lot of tech to do this fine they may have used a lot of tech and the the, prop the thing is tech evolves tech keeps evolving but in this kind of situation it, sound is not tech sound is science sound is physics and the fact that Bose is able to play around with physics to this extent and make open birds sound as nice as these do is nothing short of amazing. And it's amazing to see that Bose is still innovating after even 60 years of being in the industry. So there's still hope in the audio industry. So all in all, if you do want to buy a set of open buds and you do have the money to spend and you're somebody who wants to go cycling or, or wants to play ball or be it basketball, football, you, you name it, you name the sport and you just want a little bit of audio with you while you practice or while you play with your buddies and you can afford these, these make terrific sense to go for because of all the open style of earbuds I've heard, these are certainly the best sounding there is out there. So uh, if you do want to make these yours, how much do they cost? Well, at the time of recording this video, uh, they, well, they've just been launched in India, uh, but I think they are available abroad already. In fact, I think it may have launched two or three months prior. Uh, but uh, if you're buying these from India, India, you can make these yours for 25,900 rupees. Now, your next question is going to be, is it value for money? Well, honestly, uh, if you are looking for something like this and it, it suits your lifestyle where you do want an open set of buds, you want something to use around at home for chores or for outdoor use, uh, and you have the money to spend on these, these are definitely the best sounding ones that are, are available in the market for sure, at least because I think there are a lot of other options like uh, with air conduction like this and bone conduction, but those do have their own drawbacks because they, they've not put the amount of R&D I'm pretty sure that Bose has put 
uh, into what they've done with this. So uh, if you do want the latest uh, and the, the nicest sounding, I'd say these are the earphones to go for. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative and I do hope that I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. If you would like to help support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.